Hey guys, I'm David and today you're going to learn how to create web design prototypes fast and easy with a platform called Market. Inside this class, we're going to prototype a super simple t-shirt online store. First, we will add our design parts and then we will connect them by adding different interactions to see the real benefit of prototyping with Market. And uh, you can try Market for free test its tools and see for yourself how easy it is to make your designs come to life. So without further ado, let's get started. So once you log in, you can create a new project simply by clicking first on the create and then prototype. Once you do that, you will see a create new prototype screen. And in here you can choose from one of the available presets or create a custom one, which is what I'm going to do. So let's start the prototyping process. As you can see, since we didn't choose any template upon creating our project, we start with a blank canvas. But uh, before we start creating the prototype, let's give our project a name in the top left corner. I'm going to call it uh, My T-shirt Store. So now on to the design. I'll start with adding a logo simply by uh, dragging a text widget and typing in the name of my store. I'll of course uh, change the font style and uh, the font size using the style panel on the right. Next we can add some simple navigation links. Of course uh, we can then change their size uh, and then style just like we did with the logo text. So once we're done, we can nicely align all the links together using the align option you'll find at the top. So now in the icon panel, you can search for icons you could also add to your navigation. And in my case, I'll look for a cart icon, a user icon, and maybe a search icon. Lastly, we can change their size so they match our navigation and, of course, align everything properly. And uh, when that's all done, it's a good idea to select all the elements in our header and simply group them. So we can right-click on the selection and choose Group. Or we could always just uh, use the provided uh, hotkey combination. So now let's add a hero slider and learn how to work with web page states. So first of all, I'll drop in an image widget and upload my first image from my computer. You can see that the image adapts itself to the boundaries of our widget. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to create a simple slider. So what I want to do first is uh, I want to add some text onto my first slide. And uh, these will be just two simple headings. I will also add a button from our widget section. And uh, I'll just type in shop. Now, so the button will be white with black text and I'll remove any roundness added to the corners uh, from the style panel. To make it a real slider, it's a good idea to add some sort of uh, navigation buttons. So I'll just drop two arrow icons in and of course I will change their color. Also, we need to put them on both sides of our screen. The goal here is to make the arrows navigate to other slides. So let's start with adding our second state. So in the states panel, I'll choose copy. And uh, with this new state selected, I'll change the image and the overlaying text.
And once that's done, I'll just uh, go back to the first state and uh, select the right arrow and drag the little Thunderbolt icon to my second state. And in the second state, I will drag the left arrow to the first state. And uh, this will simply make the arrows work like links to specific slides. And once we're done, we can check the final effect in the preview tab. We can now click the arrows to see the slider effect. Now all that's left to do is to finish our front page design. So we can just add some text on the left uh, with uh, maybe an image on the right. We can drop some more images with uh, maybe like uh, overlaying text uh, below that. And of course, uh, on the go, we can change the typography settings from the style panel so that uh, everything matches the whole concept of the page. And by the way, if you don't like the way your images are being automatically put in the image widgets, you can always use the crop function you'll find in the style panel. And at the very bottom, we could create a simple footer. So first we could uh, maybe add like a simple background using the rectangle tool. And later we could just add some information in columns like the logo, uh, maybe some text uh, beneath that. Uh, we could add some links on the right and we could always just put them in uh, one or multiple columns and we could uh, maybe add some store information on the right. We could also add some icons like, uh, you know, like a marker icon or an email icon, uh, like a telephone icon to simply add some contact information. So once our home page is ready, we can now use it to add remaining pages. For the sake of this tutorial, I will just focus on adding two pages with uh, t-shirts for men and women. I'll head over to the screen panel on the left and duplicate the home page. On the new page, I'll just uh, change the text where needed. Uh, I'll get rid of the arrows and the button. For the main part, I'll create a product image, uh, a title, a price, uh, maybe some text beneath that, and uh, I will add to cart button. Now this may take some time and most probably some adjustments will be required. But uh, you know, when the first cart is ready, we can just duplicate it a few times and just change the images. And the easiest way to duplicate an element here is to just press Ctrl D on your keyboard. So same goes for the man page. All we need to do is to clone the newly created page, then just uh, change the text and the photos. I'll head back to the home page and add the interactions. Let's uh, grab the shop now button and drag the Thunderbolt icon to the second screen. And we could also do the same thing for the women link in our navigation pane. Now let's activate the second state and uh, let's add the interaction between the shop now button and the last screen. If we now preview our prototype, we can see that all the links are working. Our slider is working and the shop now button is uh, taking us where it's supposed to. Of course, we could add all the remaining interactions as well, but I think that for starters it's more than enough to understand this functionality. So there you have it. This is a quick overview of the web design prototyping capabilities of Mockit.
So this wraps it up for this uh, class. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that right now you can see all the benefits of uh, prototyping uh, using Mockit. So as always, have a nice design.